Hello everyone, I'm Nigel Leake from the Tomary Museum Association. We'd like you to meet Royal Australian Navy veteran Edward Flower, aged 100, who lives in Mayfield, Newcastle. The last survivor, Ted has vivid memories of his service aboard HMAS Manura, a cruise ship requisitioned by the Royal Australian Navy in 1939. The Manura was converted into an armed merchant ship and then Australia's first landing ship infantry, or LSI, carrying amphibious landing craft. Ted served as cook aboard the Manura when it took part in amphibious landing exercises in Port Stephens and later when it was deployed in the Pacific. In this interview, Ted takes us back to his early life on the farm, his time in the Navy, and later when he raised a family and became a successful self-employed tradesman. Before we go back and talk about your time in the Navy, we'll go back to an earlier time. Ted, you were born in Melbourne in 1923, uh, and when you were five, your family moved to England, yeah. returning when you were 10. Why the move to England? Why the move to England? Uh, well, my father, he came out from England. He was English. My mother must have uh, financed him. And he promised her that he'd come back. So he, he come out and he met my mother here, who was Australian. And... Uh, he uh, he sold his home. He built a home here, and uh, he uh, he sold the home, and uh, we went back to England. Okay, and and you came back to Australia uh, at the start of the depression. Um, five years, a uh, year. Yeah, we were five years in England. And uh, as a youngster, you worked on the family farm at Briar Hill, I understand. Yeah, yes, that's right. What was your early life like before you joined the army? Oh, but, uh, I used to get up and uh, help my father milk the cows and uh, then I'd go to school and then after school I'd mind the cows and uh, that was my... Uh, <laughs> Pitching uh, in I, on the farm. I rather enjoyed it. I like cows anyway. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like country life. We, we moved to, uh, to an orchard at Panton Hills. Yes. And uh, at the first year we done well, but the second year there was a lot of rain, there was a lot of black spot on the apples, and we couldn't sell them. And uh, my mother, she, uh, she's a great one for prayer, and uh, she prayed about it, and uh, a fellow come up and uh, from Lower Plenty, on the golf from the golf course at Lower Plenty, and uh, he gave him a job. He gave him a job as a greenkeeper. Okay, uh, and and so so he he had a job. How about yourself? I understand you um, commenced a course as yeah, a motor well, mechanic. Yeah, I worked on the farm. You worked on the farm. I worked on the orchard. Yeah, yeah. but after that, you you became a motor mechanic. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, yes, I did. I did. It was a motor repair place, yeah, okay. in Melbourne. And then after, after the start of World War II, you applied to join the Navy, but at age 18, you enlisted in the Australian Army instead. How come? Oh, well, uh, at that time, uh, America wasn't in the war until <coughs> Pearl Harbor was bombed. Right? Yeah. Uh, but when Pearl Harbor was bombed, America came into the war and they were wanting, they were wanting men. There was a demand for, uh, for men. And so uh, uh, they pulled me out of the army in, uh, into the Navy. Oh, okay. That's how you made the change. But That's you originally the joined change, the army. Yeah. And then I'd you... I'd so. already joined the Navy, but uh, I... I I joined the army too. I everyone was joining up at the time, 
every every young fellow was joining up. So I I want to be in the <laughs> join up too. And but then you you finished up back in the navy. I understand. I finished back in the navy. You yeah. enlisted at uh, at Port Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Flinders Naval Base. So we we understand that you trained as a cook before commencing service in HMAS Manura. So from mechanic to cook, uh, how did that come about? Well, it's the only thing I could take on, actually. Was it? Yes, I couldn't take anything on else on. It was uh, I didn't want I didn't want seamen because uh, the saturators. So you joined HMAS Manura, which was a passenger ship, converted to an armed merchant ship, and then an assault landing ship in late 1942. And you spent some time in 1943 in the Port Stephens area conducting amphibious training. What are your memories of that time oh, in the Manura in well, Port Stephens? Yeah, well, uh, we, we associate with the Australian Army and the in the American Army, and uh, we practiced uh, landing because the Japanese had conquered most of uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, we uh, they realised that uh, they needed they needed the modern Manora as a salt landing ship, and they 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 created barges. That took the troops ashore, and then dumped them on the on the shore, and dumped them without getting in the water. And and so um, those training exercises were conducted in Port Stephens. Yes, yeah, they they conducted them in Port Stephens. And and later, uh, Ted Manura saw action in New Guinea, the Philippines, and Borneo. Can you give us an insight into what life was like aboard the Manura back then? We used to take thousands of troops on board and uh, they had to be fed and uh, it was, life was a, a, a bit hectic at times. I was going to say because you all, you, the, the crew on the manure was over 300. 600. Uh, 600, there you go, and then plus um, soldiers that you were yeah, transporting. Yeah, there'd be a, a thousand soldiers. It must have been a... You must have had a big team working with you as cook. Yes, I do, we did. I did. It was a bit much for me. Was it? Yeah, at times, big, big yeah. Big job. Did the manure come under fire during World War II? Because you mentioned in your memoirs a particularly hair-raising incident uh, in the Philippines in 1945. Can you tell us what happened? I didn't actually see the whole thing, but... Uh, the Japanese hit back with kamikazes. You know what kamikazes are? Well, tell us what they are. Well, kamikaze is suicide bombers. Mm -hmm. They 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 load the plane up with bombs, and the and the pilot he he, he commits suicide, and he he flies the plane flies the plane into the into the ship. At that time. Uh, the manure was uh, at sea with other yeah. Well, the manure at that time, and uh, there was a kamikaze come come at us at that time in the Philippines. We were landing troops on the, the Atlantic Gulf, and uh, uh, American troops at uh, Atlantic Gulf, and uh, this kamikaze ca come towards us, and this seaman he uh, grabbed his oarlock and gun. And uh, he shot it down within metres of the ship. And what happened to the plane after that? The plane? The, the, the kamikaze plane. It, ca it ca caught on fire. Caught fire? Yeah. And then what, crashed into the sea? It crashed into the sea, yeah. Um, well, that was a near miss, but it must have been pretty hair raising. It, if it, he, uh, he got into trouble. He got into trouble for disobeying orders. Uh, this is the gunner. Yeah. yeah, he got in, in, into strife over that, but they got, later they gave him a medal. Uh, after the war, the Manura had the job of bringing home prisoners of war from Singapore, I yeah, understand. The, Can you tell us about that assignment and what you saw? The Japanese had uh, 
ha had prisoners of war and they used them on that Burma railway, a lot of them. Uh, and they half starved them. They, they, they weren't, weren't uh, well fed. And uh, we brought the eight divisions, it was. Uh, we brought them back to uh, uh, Brisbane. Okay. And they, they, they went back home then. So very sad to see uh, those they, prisoners yeah, all they, come back. They, they, were, they, weren't too, they weren't too good. They, they were, they, they, they'd lost weight and they, they needed, needed uh, better food. Yeah. Well, it was a wonderful thing that you were able to bring them back. So, Ted, at the end of the war, you were transferred from Manura to the Flinders Naval Base in Victoria, and yeah. after being demobilised in 1946, yeah. you moved to Newcastle to marry your wartime sweetheart, Cecilia Foley. Yeah. Tell us how you, how you met. How I come to meet her? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, at times we got leave in, uh, in Sydney, uh, to, to go to Luna Park. But uh, there used to be a dance hall. In Luna Park? On, on, the, on the shore. And uh, I went to this dance and uh, I got talking to her and uh, she gave me a letter. And the ship was come to, coming to, uh, to Newcastle and uh, I, I thought, she gave me a, a dress uh, where she lived and and uh, anyway when I come to Newcastle I, I went and uh, visited her went and visited her home in Stockton and you fell in love well I started writing letters that's <laughs> how it happened isn't it <laughs> so you you got married um, but and I understand there was an acute housing shortage uh, at the end of World War Two yes well I, I had to go I had to live with my mother-in-law and she lived in a rented house at Stockton, right? And uh, but it come up for sale, so that meant meant we all had to get out. If someone bought it, we'd have to get out. So how did you cope? So uh, I bought I bought the house. Oh, you bought the house. Yes, I bought the house, and uh, and then I, I had this. I bought this block of land, and uh, I done the house up and. Uh, I sold it and uh, I built here. And you were raising a young family? Yes, uh, I raised a young family, yes. And, and I understand as a young service, ex-serviceman, you, you decided to retrain as a plasterer. Oh yes, that's right. How come? Uh, the, the government had a scheme going where, where uh, if you uh, were training, and I was trained as a motor mechanic, but They'd reached a saturation point where Air Force blokes were taking on mechanical work. They'd taken on mechanical work and they were saturated with them. They oh. could, uh, had too many. The only thing I could do, do was uh, be a plasterer. So had to retrain. And, uh, I, uh, so they allocated me to R.P. Rich at Broadmeadows. Okay. And I, I, I was there for th three years. And, I'd done my time there. Wonderful. So you and Cecilia raised three children, but then you became a self-employed tradesman, I understand. Oh, yes. I, Working I decided I'd work for myself. Yes. I, I, How did that go? Uh, yes, I'd I, I done that. I, I, was very, I was pretty successful because I, I had a good name at the time as a plasterer. So what do you remember most about those years, Ted? They were challenging. They yeah. were challenging years. You know, yeah. they were a big challenge, you know. All this work inside it is all my work. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's uh, all right ceilings in there, in, in there if you look. And uh, uh, I, uh, I had a good name as a, a plasterer. I... Uh, and this uh, stood by me actually. That, that's it, very interesting. It gave me a good, uh, yeah. uh, uh, as a self-employed uh, plasterer, yeah. I, I, I was able to get work. 
But well, there must have been lots of work around then. It's, uh, people uh, after the war building homes and whatever. Oh yes, there was a lot. Of, <coughs> there was quite a bit of work around, but uh, it was still competitive. Yes. It was competitive. Don't worry about that. And Ted, um, just to um, finally, uh, you've been blessed with good health and a, and a long life. Um, what do you put that down to? Yeah, I often get I often get answers asked that question. Don't smoke. Yep. Don't drink. Yep. Become a believer. Okay. Be a believer. Okay. Those three things will get you through to a hundred. Fantastic. We will take but, that advice. But if you smoke, if you, if you smoke, you'll finish up uh, shortening your life, and it's a slow poison, and uh, and then drinking drinking doesn't help you. It doesn't help you get there either. So. Uh, but being a believer, it helps you, it, it uh, encourages you to be, uh, to be an example to other people. Ted, I've got one more question to ask. Uh, at age 100, what excites you in life at, 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 at this age? What um, interests you most? My family. Yes. I, I love my family. You're a family person, yeah. Yes, I, I, I love my my, my 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 grandchildren. Yes, I have a lot of grandchildren. I have uh, over thirty going on for forty, <laughs> and uh, uh, the grandchildren. I'm very interested in my grandchildren, and uh, I, I, I'd like to take an example off me. Good. That's good. Thank you, Ted. During his time as cook in the Navy during World War II, Ted Flower found himself taking part in some of the most important Allied deployments in the Pacific, including transporting US soldiers, facing Japanese air attacks, and bringing home Australian prisoners of war. And Ted has the medals to show for it, including the Australia Service Medal 1939-45, to recognise the service of members of the Australian Armed Forces and the Australian Mercantile Marine during World War II. The 1939-45 Star awarded for operational service for RAN and Army personnel and RAAF. And the Philippines Liberation Medal. Although this medal was created in 1944, the Philippines government decided to award it in 1994 to Australian veterans who participated in the liberation of the Philippines as part of the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Late Gulf. Ted formed strong connections with Filipino people during many return visits after the war and sponsored a Filipino student to graduation. He believes having a purpose is key to long life. That, his faith, clean living and a supportive family have kept him in good shape as he looks to turning 101 in September 2024.